Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of the human aimbot guide. Now it's time to master recoil control and tracking. In part 1, I ended the centering lessons with telling you guys not to worry about any of the settings. Now why did I say that? Because you are going to see a lot of creators saying Copy these settings so you can have an aim like this. And then they post a clip or two of them landing some nice shots, especially in bot lobbies where nobody likes to shoot back if you know what I'm talking about and then a screenshot or two of their setting. This is just wrong and an easy way to grab views while hiding the truth from you so nobody can actually catch up with their top level of gameplay, if it's actually top level of gameplay because VPN. Anyways, there are things that are way more important than settings, which we will be talking about at the end of the guide. But as you watch this guide and implement everything I'm telling you about, you will see for yourself that settings are not the foundation, but a complement to skills, which are the proper foundation to have a good aim. Now let's start with recoil control. He has a Chronos Zen. He has aimbot, recoil scripts. Or he decided to watch this guide and practice everything consistently. Listen, COD is one of the easiest games when it comes to recoil control. And I'm saying this for a fact because I have played the OG Rust, Apex Legends, PUBG, CSGO, and all of them have a recoil that is way harder to control or master. So this is going to be a breeze for you. Step one, pattern control. Make sure that you have your bullet impacts turned on in your settings, then shoot a weapon without controlling it at all and look at that pattern. Your goal is to pull in the opposite direction of how this pattern is going. So start by shooting 10 bullets only and move your aim while shooting in the opposite direction of the how the gun is moving. Keep doing this until you see your bullets landing in the same spot. And once that pattern becomes easy, Go for 15 or 20 bullets at a time, look at the pattern of those bullets, and then repeat. And at some point, you'll be able to do this with a full mag. And if you are using a mid or long range weapon, make sure to add distance to your exercises to mimic the reality of those scenarios you're gonna be having in Warzone. Repeat this for around five minutes a day using your favorite weapon or a weapon that feels challenging for you. I know it sounds so easy, but that is because recoil control is actually so easy to practice. The more you do it and focus on the pattern, the more muscle memory you're going to have and then you're gonna subconsciously be having really good aim while you're playing. Step two, always strafe. This is my regular pattern without controlling it. And this is the same pattern while only spamming right and left on my keyboard. So when you are shooting, keep strafing to the left and right to negate most of the horizontal random recoil and you will be left with mostly vertical recoil which is easy to control by simply pulling down. On top of that, strafing will make you a harder target to hit and it activates rotational aim assist for controller player, which gives you that sticky aim and helps at such a high rate. Practice this for around five minutes a day as well. And step number three is attachments. Listen guys, I know that you love watching YouTube videos and seeing, oh, this is the meta loadout and this streamer is using this build or that build. Now using their exact builds is a great start, but that shouldn't be what you should be using all the time. Because first of all, you're not at the same skill level that they are, and you need something that complements where you are currently and so you can progress bit by bit and hopefully become at their level. So add attachments based on what you are struggling with the most. If you go to your gunsmith and click on weapon details, you can see what each attachment does for all of the aspects of the weapon. So depending on what is annoying you about that weapon, pick an attachment that complements that, whether it's vertical recoil, horizontal recoil, or the initial gun kick. But keep in mind that vertical recoil can always be controlled by just pulling down. So all you have to do is focus on the horizontal recoil and the gun kick if the weapon has a lot. Practice this for 10 minutes a day with and without bots and without attachments and then with the attachments so you can feel the difference and know if this is the right fit for you. Becoming better at the game can be tricky. While you're trying to stay alive, get the kills and dubs, all while SBMM is cranked to the max, sometimes it's hard for you to see your own flaws or even know what skills you need to improve. A professional perspective to show you what you're doing right wrong and make a customized program to catapult your skills to the next level is something both comforting and helpful this is where i come into play i have done more than 3500 pod coaching sessions in the past four years i have helped multiple players increase their gameplay and kds with ease and now they are being accused of cheating if that seems like something you are interested in i offer free consultation calls to explain the coaching process and make a lesson plan based on your needs. Just hit the link in the description and check out everything on my page. And now for tracking. Tracking is keeping your aim steady on a moving target, whether the target is in the air, slide canceling, or strafing. It's one of the most important skills to master in this game, so focus up. If you are on a PC, 
I highly recommend downloading Aim Labs, which is completely for free on Steam. They have a huge library of tracking exercises and other skills. But do make sure to go to the settings and customize your sensitivity based on your input. But if you feel like Aim Labs is not for you, here's a solution that is just as effective in the game itself. Pick a target like these lines on the containers on shipment or any random line in plunder if you don't have multiplayer. Move your crosshair along the lines and try to keep it on track as much as possible. But don't go too fast at the cost of going off the target. We are focusing on quality here and not quantity. So start slowly and steadily and then add to your speed gradually. And practice this for five minutes a day. Do make sure to practice tracking lines from different angles and elevations that way you will get used to tracking any scenario in the 3D realm. Once you feel like this is becoming easy, even when you are tracking faster, start shooting while doing so and land as many shots as you can on all the different lines from different elevations and angles just like before. The only difference here is because you are shooting, you need to implement the recoil control patterns and skills that you learned from the previous lesson. Practice this for 5-10 to 10 minutes a day. Now what I said about tracking is great for shooting targets that are at a distance or in the air. But the most important one is the close range fights. So now you really need to focus up. If you have a buddy that wants to help or practice with you, either hop into multiplayer or plunder and have one of you guys run back and forth while jumping and sliding at random intervals while you try to track them as much as possible from a hip fire stance and then while ADSing. This will help you develop a muscle memory and a great reaction speed to all the sudden movement that people can do in this game. You can even make your health 300 in multiplayer customs, which is just the way it is in Warzone, and try to kill your friend as they make themselves a harder target to hit. The second exercise for close range fights is to 1v1 with your friend under the condition that you are both strafing while doing so, which is going to be a very realistic situation because that's how most people shoot, especially in the close range fights. So from one side, you are making sure that you are a harder target to hit. And if you're on controller, you're having that rotational aim assist on. And at the same time, you're developing the muscle memory and reaction speeds for how it is in Warzone when everybody is horizontally moving to the right and left. Practice this for 10 minutes a day and if you can, even more. As for the last drill, which is probably the hardest one here, have your friends slide cancel around you while trying to break your camera. This will be similar to the first exercise of tracking where you are moving your crosshair on different lines and different dimensions. All you have to do is making sure that you try to keep your aim on them as much as possible. Yes, they are going to be really fast and it's going to be hard to track at the start. But with the proper time and some settings that we'll be talking about at the final part of this video, this will become a breeze. Practice this for 10 minutes as well. And now for distance. The speed and the distance of the target that you are shooting at, combined with the bullet velocity of the weapon you're using, highly affects where you should aim and track the target. As the distance between you and the target becomes bigger, you're gonna have to aim above the target and if it's moving, ahead of it as well. So on the close range, you're gonna aim like this, of course, and the bullets will hit. But as the target distance increases, if you're still aiming at the same spot, the bullet will travel and fall down. That's why you should aim up, and if in case the target is moving, you have to aim up and ahead of it so that the shots and the target meet at a certain distance. And of course, each weapon will have a different bullet velocity, so as you practice and get used to the weapon, you'll know where to aim and how high you need to aim as well. The best way to make this easy for yourself is to go to the gunsmith and equip attachments that do two things. The first one is having a better effective damage at range, which means that as the distance increases, you will not lead as many shots so you can hit that target at that long range. And the second and most important one is attachments that give you a better and higher bullet velocity. Because the higher the bullet velocity, the less you have to aim up and ahead, and it will give you that hit scan feeling even at range. And before part two ends, I just want to say that I'm proud of every single person watching this video because they either decided to become a better player, or even they just want to make sure that they know everything about their foundations and make sure that they are solid. So play hard and smart, and I'll catch you guys in part three.